guys, and welcome to The Truth Hurts with me, Tony Quinn. The Truth Hurts is a show about recovery and everything in between. I said I wasn't going to do that introduction, but I'm doing it again. And today, we have Ricardo Neva with us today. I said it right, eh? I did yeah. say it then. Hi, Ricardo. 100%. <laughs> guys, Ricardo is doing some unbelievable things for the mental health community, and I'm honored to have him on the show. And Thank you so much. He's going to share his story with us. Tell us about a massive walk he is doing from Joburg to, D to Durban in honor of mental health to raise awareness and to raise funds for mental health. Hopefully, like, yeah, make some funds, yeah. You're going to make a lot of funds. We're going to get it out there, bro. Yes. So, Ricardo, can you just give us an introduction about yourself and how you came on the path of mental health awareness and how you got to this point? Okay, so um, obviously, Ricardo Neva. Um, I've kind of always been depressed, uh, since I was like 13, 14, I've just struggled with feeling happy and finding reasons to be happy. And I used to surround myself with people in the sense that I was just never in my room and I was never like alone. I was trying to stay not being alone yeah. and that obviously aided, but it didn't eventually that all collapsed. And I used to have a lot of like collapses where I would collapse and I would always find some new addiction or some new coping mechanism that would help in the short run but it never was successful in the long run. And it came about this year. Um, I was just, I had a full other breakdown. I was just locked in my room. I'd been going so crazy because COVID had just arrived. So it hadn't gone into lockdown and I was just in my room. People weren't going out. It was like making plans was, was hard. People were freaking out. And I was just in my room and I was, I had a breakdown. I was laid in bed the whole day. Didn't get out, didn't leave. And I was just crying and full on like, listening to sad music and eventually one of my roommates because I live with two I lived with two people at the time I live with one now um he came in knocked on my door and he saw me on the floor just broken and he's like what's up and I was like I want to die and he was like oh crap so I don't know if I'm, oh, I don't know yeah, I swear bro I swear okay. <laughs> this channel cool. free for all. <laughs> okay so he's like oh crap and he's like Ricardo we need to get you some help and I was like I can't I can't do that I can't be like asking people for like, I can't ask my mother to be like, yo, mother, I need to go to therapy. Because I was like, that doesn't feel right. Like, I'm like, there's just so much that you don't want to be asking people for help. And that's how kind of how I was. I didn't want to ask people for help. I was always the joker, put a smile on. I'm like, cool. If someone else is happy, that's fine. That doesn't matter what's happening with me. And that's how I was, I was as a human. And I am still like that in a sense, but I've gotten a lot more in touch with my personal self. And I'm a lot more knowing when I need to take a step back to myself. But he basically was like, give me your phone, took my phone. He had, he had his face on my phone. So he unlocks my phone. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, don't worry. Takes my phone out of the room, calls my mother. And he just tells my mother that I'm like, I want to die. And my mother calls me, well, he's, uh, gets the phone back. And she's like, Ricardo, do you need therapy? And I was like, I can't do that. And she's like, Ricardo, do you need therapy? And I was like, I would like therapy. Yes, because I, I can't. I'm physically struggling with everything that's happening. And so that kind of catalysted me into finally starting to deal with my issues and starting to unearth some of the stuff that had been buried in that I'd like been like, you know what, that's fine. Just stuff it down, lock it away. And it comes to this year after five, the five week lockdown happens. Um, a month after the five week lockdown ends, I'm in my room and I've gone, I'm going stir crazy again. Cause I don't like being stuck in my room. It's yeah. like the, my pet peeve is being stuck. I don't like being stuck. I like being busy and practical. So I decide hell, I'm going to go for a walk. And I've been walking a lot recently. So I went for a walk and it was in this walk that I was just going through a lot in my head. There was a lot of personal stuff that was happening and it snapped to me that I was like, you know what, this makes me feel better. And I was like, how can I use this to help people who have things like me? Because again, like that's my whole personality is I want to help people. That's like, I don't want ever someone to feel sad like I do. It's that must be the worst feeling. And I can, I know from the internal experience that mine was pretty rubbish and granted everyone else's is different, but I didn't want that to be a thing. So I was like, okay, how do I put walking and helping together? And I was like, hell endurance and doing these massive feet that people wouldn't ever think about usually goes down really well. People like back it. They're like, that is awesome. You did so much. Thank you. And it's one of those, like, especially yes theory gave me those ideas where they're like doing stuff for people and they're going out of the way to do some crazy stuff to help people. And people are like inspired by that. And I was like, what's yes theory. Yes Theory is a YouTube channel in America and their yep. whole basis is that they want to seek discomfort and through discomfort, they can grow, you can grow and you okay. get new experiences and you, you learn more about yourself. You make new friends. Like you can only 
have memories once you leave your comfort zone sort of vibe. So they whole channel started out where they were like doing 30 day bucket list challenge. So they were doing every day, they were doing something on their bucket list and it just evolved into that. Like now they go to the most unvisited island in the least traveled place in the world and they go there and they explore the community and they bring a sense of like, we are here together, we're all human beings, but they only did, were able to find that out by going to that weird place that no one would have ever thought of going to. So that kind of jump started the idea to walk to Durban. I was like, I'm going to do this crazy task. I'm going to go through 14 places because it's a 14 day walk, 14 little stops in between, in between those stops during the walk, obviously it's going to be myself and Jason, who's my friend walking with me and we're going to see stuff and we're going to interact with each other. But every time we get to a new place, we're going to go try and see, talk to some of the locals. Like obviously we'll be staying in, a, in, in accommodation, go to the restaurants, talk to people and just find out and hopefully bring some stories. We're working with some brands that I can't say now, but we're also trying to see if we can stop at the community, like radio stations for those communities and speak about our journey to that, to hopefully inspire the smaller communities that might not have ever seen someone do this for them. Yeah. So yeah, that is the whole way this thing started in my head. <laughs> but no, this is incredible because you only thought of this recently. So this hasn't actually been like a plan for the last year and a bit where you're like, I'm going to train for this. I'm going to get ready for this. It's something that just came oh, yeah. to you in lockdown. Yeah, the, the, the whole idea came to me thinking, I'm a relatively physical person, so I'm, I'm relatively fit because I'm, I work in, in, in the film industry, so I'm always like up and down, running around, and I work in camera, so I'm always picking up relatively heavy things. So I was kind of fit, but like now I'm like, I walked to Pretoria about two weeks ago, and boy, did my legs feel it. Like we got there, and I was like, you know what? It's great. I love this burn. I love this feeling. I'm really happy I did this but I have not trained for this for like two years. I've not been like, this is my plan. No, this is just spur of the moment. I'm going to make a difference sort of thought. So just in, in regards to that. Okay. So you're going to do this walk from Joburg to Durban. It's going to be over 14 days and you're going with, like you said, with your friend, Jason, yeah. have you guys um, yeah. mentally prepared for it? What's your plan of action? Obviously physically you've got some sort of routine that you're working on. So like you said earlier, yeah. you, 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 he told me off camera that he's going, you're going to, um, do strength training today and stuff like that. Yeah, two weeks strength. Well, not two weeks, but like I'm going to be vlogging two weeks of strength training, but I start doing strength training now for the next two months. Wow. And then so mentally, have you guys got a plan of action for the whole walk? Because obviously through the 14 days, you know, a lot of stuff could come up. It's almost like meditation. And um, do you have a plan of action in regards to that? I think the the plan of action is me and him are going to be cracking a whole lot of horrible jokes with each other. <laughs> I think um, I know that I walked to Pretoria and I, when I was walking, it reached like the 40 K mark and my legs had stopped. Like I stopped feeling my lower half of my body and my, my head was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And in, it, internally my willpower started kicking in and I really felt the extent of my willpower because my willpower was like, like your bottom half doesn't work. You want to shut down. But my head was like, do you really want to be that guy who made this promise that you want to help people and not help people? And that was where my willpower came in. And I was like, okay, I'm going to keep walking. So I think willpower wise, I think we're both really big people of helping people. We've worked together. We've always been like each other's. It's really weird. We met 2017 and we've always just really been really good friends and we've always pushed each other. So I think we have a really good relationship in terms of being like, yo, I'm struggling. Come on, dude, you can do it. And it's going to be one of those things that we're going to be able to really motivate each other. But I think also just internally, we both have really strong willpower to help people. And I think that's what's going to drive us forward is the endurance of we need to make a difference for people. So like, yeah, so that's going to be what inspires you and keeps you going the whole time is I'm doing this for people and for yourself. I hope you know that you also need to do this for yourself, right? So Yeah, no, 100%. I think mean, yeah. it's also just to like be like, I can do it. I'm not going to let my depression put me down. I'm not going to let my myself down because I've put myself to this cause. But I, my main thing is always going to be like, I want to make help people. Like yeah. I want people to feel, look at this and be like, you know what? That man had depression. He was struggling, but like, look at him. He put his mind to it. He, he decided to do this project and he went and did it. That's, what that's kind of the, I think that's that's motivation. What's so important about it is how um, you're showing people anyone who does suffer with depression or anxiety or any kind of mental illness that you can get up and you can do something. And this isn't like a little thing, you know, for someone who has depression, just getting up and walking to the kitchen is difficult. And you've actually inspired yourself. In really terms hard, yeah. 
yeah, it's, it's amazing. Are you going for therapy now or has that stopped? So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to my therapist. Um, I'm, there's still a lot of personal stuff that I am busy trying to work through. Yeah. Um, I don't see him as frequently as when I first went into it. Cause when I first went to it, it was like, okay, you want to die. You just, no, I not I wanted to die. Like I, I, I don't, I, I haven't gotten suicidal before, but it's one of those things where I, if I was to die, I'd be okay with it. Yeah. It was that, yeah. it was at that point that I'd reached. Um, and, um, what's it called? Uh, so I don't see him as frequently. I see him like twice a month and it's just like to really run down through anything. And unless something really hectically has happened, like about a month after, um, lockdown had ended, I had lost a really close friend of mine. Uh, so, so that kicked in and I was like, Oh, okay. I feel really bad about this, but I don't know how to work through it. Uh, cause I was like, I got to just internalize the people. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And I pushed that down. And then I was like, I realized, Oh wait, this isn't healthy. So yeah. I went to him and then I started working through it now. So, you know, there's, I, I, it, I see him depending on when I, how badly I need it, but like I try to keep a regular two session per month just to always try and work through things and talk. And there's a, there's a sort of cathartic feeling when it's therapy because you, you know that person's legally bound to not ever discuss anything yeah. about you, which is, which is really nice because like as a person, like sometimes I feel scared to talk to my friends because of that whole feeling of like, I don't know who, who you're going to tell about my issues. And sometimes my issues are thingy. And that just comes from a bit of a paranoia that I have, but like, I'm slowly working through that. And that's again, because I had a therapist who was able to be like, but do you really just think this is valid? And I was like, huh, fair enough. It's thinking back in the past. It's like, eh. yeah. Yeah. What I like is that you, you, what you're basically describing is a sense of self-awareness now from, you know, being so depressed and feeling like there's nothing you can do to actually being in a point, at a point now where you have learned that it's okay to ask for help. And when you are not okay, that it is okay to pick up the phone and go see your therapist or speak to your therapist, someone yeah. you trust. And I think that's something a lot of people can learn from you. I mean, you're really young as well from, I'm just assuming you are, you're young. So <laughs> just assume, yeah, yeah, you, you're a baby, bro. Like what, at your I'll age. Be, like, I'll be 23 when I arrive in Durban. Oh, for real? Yeah, I'll be 23. Uh, we're arriving on October 5th, which is my birthday. So bro, I'm like 11 like years older than you. 11. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what? I did at 23. Meth. That's what I did at 23. You are walking to Durban and I was <laughs> in a fucking crack house. Okay. <laughs> no, Fair enough. Yeah, it was a vibe. No, but what you're doing is, is amazing. And I feel like um, especially the younger generation are now more open to talking about mental illness. And a little yeah. bit, a little bit of the stigma is being let go because of people like you and people who are willing to completely open up and be vulnerable about it. And especially for men, yeah, for, for men, I feel like um, there's a very big stigma attached. And I feel like to have someone young and fit and someone willing to speak about it so openly is something that it, a lot of people need. And you, you're doing that. You're taking the bull by the fucking horns and you're doing it. So do you, um, can you just go a bit into what the aim is of the walk. So what you guys are doing, um, what the process will be. You're working with the South African Depression and Anxiety Organization, I think. And just a little bit about that. So, yeah. Okay. So, so currently we are trying to donate to three mental health institutions. So we have two South African ones and one international one, because obviously whilst we're doing this to really help mental health, it wouldn't make sense to just focus on one area. We wanted to also try and make an impact sort of internationally. So uh, we're currently busy discussing with SADEG and SFM, SAFMH, South African Federation of Mental Health. We're trying to see uh, to get them on board. We're already donating to them, which is just a donation. So like, that doesn't really require any sort of like, yay, we're together. But like we're working with SADEG and stuff like that to sort of partner and be like, this walk is endorsed by, by us. Yeah. So we're trying to do that. Uh, so that's slowly making progress. We're getting there. Emails are being sent. Calls are being made you know, all the bureaucratic stuff that needs to happen before anything sort of happens. Um, and then the whole point of the walk is we've got three main aims uh, that myself and Jason, when we were discussing, because I posted the video and that the, the I need help, I need your help. I, I just come back from my walk. I literally ran into my room 
I didn't really have much more of a plan than I was going to walk to this distance. And I sat down, I recorded, I did the little quick Googles and I was like, cool, 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 cool. Um, and when I was talking to Jason, cause he called me in the minute I, I, I sent him the video before I even posted, I was like, are you interested? Do you think this is cool? And he's like, hell yeah, bro. If I'm there, I'll do it with you. And then he gave me a call like an hour later. He's like, you know what? I'll be there. I don't care. Uh, and we discussed, it was like, we have three main aims. One is to obviously show people that you, just because you have a mental health illness doesn't mean that you are useless because that's the stigma. It's like, oh, I'm feeling depressed. Get over it. You're just being overly dramatic. You're being sad. And it's like, that doesn't make me feel better. Thank you. Okay. I'll just bury this into the little hole and eventually it will overspill. And we wanted to show people that just because you have this doesn't mean you're useless. It just means that you have an illness. Like if someone had the flu, it's the same concept. It's just now one is that you can't see it physically. It's something that someone suffers internally. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to obviously do that, show people that just because I have depression doesn't mean I can't do things. I'm walking to Durban. Yeah. Like I've done this. Uh, the second thing is we want to show the beauty of the world, especially now with COVID. That is a big thing. People are so stuck in home or people leave and it's like, the world, oh no, it's scary. It's like, the world is beautiful. The world is fine. We just need to remember that we have to appreciate the small things. Like if you get to walk your dog, look at the park. The park can be a really beautiful place. Like I've woken up, well, not woken up. I've been awake until six in the morning doing my work. And I walk out of my door and I just see the sun rising and I live right across a park and it's like the sun rises and I see this park and it's beautiful. And it's like, wow. When I walked to Pretoria and I saw Rosebank in its, as the sun was rising, it was like these high rise buildings. I was like, the city is beautiful. It's, it's weird awesomeness. And then the third thing we wanted to do was just to show people that they're not alone. Yeah. Which is, I think, when you have someone who has depression and a slight bit of paranoia to, together with someone who has mild ADHD and we're both like, we can do things, we're doing things like, you see, people say ADHD, they can't concentrate, they're not being able to focus on work and it's like, we're focusing on walking and we're being able to do this. Yeah. So it's like, those are the three aims we kind of were like, this is what we want to do. And while all of this is like awareness based and showcase based, we're also then hopefully while we're walking, we're, we're trying to see if we can go like live on TikTok and stuff like that. And hopefully as people see it, us doing that, they can obviously donate. They can go check our crowdfunding platforms and donate. And then hopefully at the end of the journey, once we're done with everything, we can be like, look, thank you so much. This is what your contribution has done. And then donate to these three organizations. And hopefully they can do some good on a practical level, implementing more beds in hospitals for mental health, hiring more uh, therapists in areas that can't be can't have access to therapy at a very wide level. So that's kind of the, the end goal is then to take that journey and the lessons we've learned, put it into a video for people to be aware and like reflect on and then take the money that's raised and put it into a practical use. Oh, that's incredible. And I think um, something that's really cool is you touched on that you're going to actually try to speak to people, you know, in the smaller communities as you walk. And I think that that is very important. I think, you know, letting people know mental health is an issue everywhere, everywhere, no matter who you are, where you come from. It, it, it's incredible to hear other stories and to also inform people of what other people are doing to better themselves. So um, speaking to someone, finding out what works for them, what doesn't work for them, how they cope, you know, and learning from each other. I feel like um, it, yeah. that's beautiful. It's a big opportunity to learn. And um, yeah, what are you what are you looking for from from an outside perspective? What are you guys now working towards getting for the trip? Currently, so like obviously now it'll be like we're two months away from walking. We're aiming to walk between September twentieth and September twenty third because I am in varsity, so I am shooting my movie in September. So we're waiting for confirmation on those dates, but it's between September twentieth and September twenty third is when we depart, like between those three days. And right now it's the scramble of we've gotten a few brands to like hop on and we're busy sorting out that on a, on a, on a um, bureaucratic level. And we're, once we get that linked up, hopefully that will help shave down some costs of the trip. Like we're trying to see if we can get food sponsors and stuff like that. Cause like feeding, cause it's not just myself and Jason walking. We have a medic just in case anything happens. Cause we obviously don't want to be walking, record this whole journey and get by a snake. Save <laughs> And I, no one ever sees it. It's like, well, death. <laughs> so 
you're like, and then we have my editor who's also in the car and a security person in case anything really does happen. Okay. We, we, we're always safe. So like to feed and like accommodate those five people throughout the journey. Plus they're in a, a vehicle for support that also requires petrol. So right now it's, we're trying to get sponsors to help take down some of those hard cut costs out of the way. Mm -hmm. So the biggest thing that we're really just trying to do is raise money. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. unfortunately, that's what's needed. So we're busy. Right now, we're starting out um, really pushing it on social media. So our TikTok, our Twitter, our Facebook, our Instagram, we're really showcasing, like trying to bring up the awareness that we have a crowdfunding platform. Please, if you can, please go donate. Um, it's at Backer Buddy. So it's one of the most, it's a, it's a very reliable source. Literally just donate. Thingy, and we've been asking anyone for any value, like myself and Jason put up a TikTok which is like, hey guys, if you donate five rand, that helps. So literally, we're just that's currently the, the big thing that we're doing. And then we're just trying to create a more of a social media presence because at the end of the day, we also want people to, social media controls everything yeah. in life right now. Everyone is always on their phones, WhatsApp, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. So we want to try and build up our social media presence so that we can also then, when we are going live or we're going, sending out stuff, it affects a wider range of people. Someone who really needed that moment Oh, the daily motivation okay. post on Facebook, Twitter, and you know what? Thank you. So that's kind of. Did you, oh, hold on. Did the you internet is messing out. The internet is fucking out. Stop it. Wait, you're moving a little bit. Move. Bad internet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there you go. You're back. Can you tell us your uh, social media platforms? Where we can so find you? We have. So we have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and it's walk to DBN on Facebook. You might have a little bit of an issue searching that. So just search walk to Durban and we'll pop up. We have the logo that is, uh, the silhouetted face with, uh, the various mental illnesses and then South African map and then two dots on the head where the okay. brain would be. So, you know, mental health people. Uh, so that's our three main official walk to Durban social medias. Then we have, the whole team has their own personal social media and they're currently advertising there. So, um, on myself and Jason are very heavy on TikTok because it's just got that virality sort of factor. So that's where we're really always trying to be pushing. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can find my personal account if you, if you, if you can't find walk to Devon. <laughs> no, like the, this, this is going to be the thumbnail for the whole thing. Just this. No, I'll tell okay. you what. I love, I love thumbnails. This is the thumbnail. This is the thumbnail. Um, what we'll need is, um, can you, so will you send me all your social media platforms, the backer buddy link as well, and then I'll yeah. put it all in the description and then we'll also get that going. That's we'll good. promote from our side, see if people are interested. I think what you are doing is unbelievable. And Thank you. we also like, um, from the Tony Quinn channel, we would like to follow you as well. Like keep us updated, please keep, let us know what you're doing. Let us know of any thing that's happening we can speak to you and jason um at some yeah. point before you you know before you take on the big walk and just keep us posted on everything and really excited to see what do. you do with this i'm so excited to do this i like literally I, I i i'm counting down days i'm really like i want september to get here yeah <laughs> oh god i'm i'm, I'm both I'm both very intimidated by the fact that i'm going to be walking 636 kilometers but I'm also extremely excited because it's like, wow. <laughs> and then the whole crew who, who does this wants to go get tattoos afterwards. So I'm like super excited for this. We're all just going to go get Wait, tattoos. Wait, I've got a too. tattoo person for you to go to. We'll hook that up for you guys. Hey. <laughs> hook you the fuck up, bro. Look, we'll sort you out. Also, I would, uh, my tattoos are all on my legs. So like, okay. I, I can't really stretch that far. <laughs> no, but for real, if you, obviously, if you need an artist, hold up. I'm just doing a plug now. Just a plug for my tattoo artist, my boyfriend. Rex so uh -huh. But um Three tattoos, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but dude, I'm it's it's really great and I'm so honored to have been able to to chat to you about this. I'm so I'm glad we finally did this. It's been a while, but I'm so I'm so happy. This is Turned out great. I love it. Me too. And guys, I'm so sorry that the internet kept fucking up, but our editors this side will We'll schmooze that. So some of it might not make sense, but we'll put some captions at the bottom. And uh, Ricardo, thank you so, so much, my dude. See, he's stuck again. You're stuck again, bro. 
you're, you're stuck on my side. Oh, God. Okay, we're back. Okay, yeah, we I'm back. Oh, well, wait, two seconds. Oh, God. We're back. Okay, I'm waiting for you to move. There. Okay. Woo. Ricardo, thank you so much for being with us. And we look forward to seeing everything. Guys, we're going to put the links in the bottom. Uh, please check out uh, Walk to Durban. Check out what they're doing. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you are interested in helping in any way. And we will definitely keep up to date with Ricardo and everything that's going on. So, Ricardo, thank you for being on the channel. And thank you for sharing your story, dude. Thank you for having me. Cool. I'm going to press uh, stop recording and then say goodbye to you properly. So, guys, thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next episode.